Uh, Nasreen, I'm so sorry for your loss and thank you for joining us this evening. One would presume that four weeks on from the tragedy, you had found out rather more about what happened to your mum and your aunt than, than you knew on the night. Is, is that the case? Um, we know more in terms of we've met other victims and we have uh, approached them and we've found things out for ourselves. Other than that, no. I, I mean, it's taken so long for the numbers to reach 80. Um, the, I mean, the, the next day, the numbers of dead were nine. We always knew it was more and we still know it's more. So that's no information for us. It's things we, we, we assumed. So you, you mentioned dealing chiefly with, with other survivors yeah. and other, other grieving families. What, what sort of lines of communication do you have with what I'll, I'll loosely describe as the authorities? We have very little communication. I mean, we have been given a key worker for which we had to run around so much. What do you mean? Um, we had to, we were given a family liaison officer by the police quite quickly. Uh, and then through them we were promised to have a key worker which puts us in touch with the council and is supposed to be there to help us and you know, introduce us to things that are available and everything. And it took so long to have one in place. Uh, we literally had to chase our, um, the, the officers to, to be able to find out who it actually is. And once she's been in place, to be honest, um, the number of phone calls we've had to make chasing her up, uh, I would have rather called the places up myself and everything we've kind of done, uh, we've found out through other means and we've had to put it through to her. Uh, it hasn't been, there hasn't been much communication. What, what is it that you're mostly trying to establish that, that you haven't been able to? Uh, I mean, um, one of the main things we have been trying to do, and I know my brother spoke to you, is sorting out the housing for my disabled brother. And um, we put, we've been trying to sort that out provisionally ourselves because there was no key worker. And then when she came in, she kind of um, took it over. She did nothing with it. I had to ring her up and remind her, you know, the MP, the MP assured us that this will get done. And uh, she called us a week later to say, you know, the council's refused everything. And then when we asked, for her to put us in touch with the manager that took the decision. She spoke to my brother, I believe, today or yesterday to say that manager is going on annual leave. And she left us as, as that without telling us who else would be in charge. With, with the situation and it's unresolved. it's shocking yes. that there's so many people traumatised and going through such tragedy. Not myself, everybody from that tower. And the managers at the council see it OK to continue with the annual leave. You, you, you say not yourself, and yet you still don't know for sure what happened to your mum. No. We, well, my brother was on the phone to them. We know that they went up to the 23rd floor. We know they died there because he heard them. Um, Do you understand why the authorities have been un unable to, to definitively confirm that to you? Uh, yes, because they let them burn for too long. Um, you know... James, what's, what, what's more horrendous than getting burnt alive? You know, you, you ask yourself, is there anything worse? And I'm afraid there is, having, you know, no remains. And yes, it's taking them so long because they failed to put the fire out when they should have. You know, we went, I went to that site in the morning. We went, we were there all day. There was still fire inside the building the next day, 24 hours later. And because of that, yes, it's hard for them to tell us what's happened to my mum and my aunt because they have been so burnt that the coroner defines them as calcified. There is no organic matter in the bones for them to be DNA tested. And I don't know who took the decision to decide it, they don't need to any longer fight the fire. I don't know why somebody who is responsible who was responsible for that fire decided it's okay to stop fighting it and just let everything else burn because that decision has cost us the remains of our family, the only thing we could have had. And I see that as a criminal offence, James. And that you, should be investigated. And you have no, no remains to We to have bury. no remains. We have nothing. We have, since the very first day, we told our, I mean, 
we told our family liaison officer that we want to have a video of the coroner's search. They said, oh yeah, we think you know this is part of the part of the the work anyway. Yes. And um, and then in the victims meeting at Olympia a couple of weeks ago, ten days ago, we were told no, there's no video. We have taken pictures. Um, and then Commander Kandi said yes, we will get these pictures out to the families because we and other victims were very keen on these pictures. It's our right. Yes. Um, um, just like everything else, it was a waste of time, waste of waste of time that we could have spent grieving. Um, we weren't given the pictures as they promised. They said they'll get them to us immediately. Okay. We've been denied everything. I have no idea what's up there. For all I know, there could be in one piece. For all I know, I have no idea. There is, I, I should stress, there is an open invitation for, for the council or, or for central government to come on and, and address many of the questions that are continuing to be thrown up by this, by this awful, awful tragedy. Nazreen, thank you so much for your time this thank evening. You.